Hi, today I want to talk about something that I feel is a real problem among people that are my age and my generation, and are one of the reasons that a lot of the people that I get along with are either younger than me, or they're in their 30s or 40s. I find that a lot of people who are my age, they have this idea that they are entitled to things that they did not earn, entitled to things that they did not pay for, entitled to things that they never worked for, and the idea, it really kind of drives me nuts. It's not even that you are asking for something for free, it's the idea that you are simply entitled to that thing for free that, that pisses me off. It's kind of like the attitude that annoys me. And this is something that I feel like that is worth talking about because a lot of people ask me, how did you learn this stuff? Well, who taught you or who showed you? And a lot of the reason that I know what I know and a lot of the ways that I've gotten the opportunities that I did in life were because within tech culture, I always knew how to make sure that, I, that the people who had knowledge, the people who had something to share with me would feel open, willing, and motivated to share that information with me. And this really starts, the problem with, it really starts with this letter that got sent about a year ago. So a lot of you are probably familiar with this whole thing with the Ferguson verdict. But one of the things you may not be familiar with is this one letter that the student sent a professor. And it got, it got a lot of internet coverage. I'm just reading it here just in case you didn't, uh, you didn't realize. I'm just reading it in case you weren't aware of it. Hello, professor. It has come to the attention of the students that students of color, particularly black students, who have suffered significant trauma over the past few weeks due to the grand jury decisions, are not at all in a place to take their finals right now. I am not among these students, and as a white middle class person, I have to privilege I have the privilege no they, I have to privilege wow, of being able to step away from these events and put enough energy in a schoolwork and finals to assure that I will pass my classes, apparently not English. That is not the case for many of my peers. I do not know if you have been in conversation with any other students or faculty regarding finals. I do know, though, that the college administration has done very little, if anything, to support students who are struggling and feel traumatized because of the recent and day-to-day -day acts of racism in this country. Black students and other students of color have to focus on their survival and are expected to put energy into finals, while the white students, who may also feel shaken by these events, but not to the same degree, can focus most of our time on studying and preparing for finals. I am asking that you create an option, if you have not already done so, for students who do not feel like they are in a place emotionally, mentally, or physically to postpone the statistics final. Columbia Law School has already done this, and they linked to something. If, there, if this were an event that was if this was an event which was actually recognized by the school and country as a national trauma, such as 9/11 or the new or the Newtown shootings, I expect that Oberlin would have, I expect that they would have immediately taken action to prioritize student well-being. Just because the murders of Eric Garner and Michael Brown do not seem to threaten the survival or safety of white people does not mean that they are not severely affecting students on our campus. I know that you have the ability and power to make decisions like this, and I am asking that you use your power to support your students who have put so much energy into the class already. They are tired, they are hurting beyond belief, and their well-being needs to be prioritized. See, that's the thing. Needs to be prioritized. I need to not take this final. I need to have this week off because events that happened a bunch of hundred miles away that have nothing to do with me have traumatized me to the point where I cannot focus on my schoolwork. And the professor politely said something that was much nicer than what I would have said. He said, no. One word response, no. My response would have been something like this, but that's not appropriate if you're a college professor. And I'm not going to talk about the Ferguson students. I'm not going to, I don't want to get into any of that in this channel. What I want to focus on is this, is this generational thing, this idea that you are entitled to things. Because after this professor said no, there was such an outrage on the internet from all the people who, who, who were friends with this particular student who supported this idea. And they really thought that this, it, again, the authority figure said no to a request that is just not appropriate at this time. And they perceive that as an injustice. Why did they perceive that as an injustice? Because now they have to take their finals. And now they're mad. They're mad because they feel entitled to the it's just to, to not have to take a test just because we came up with this silly reason. And you know, this, this is something that really drives me nuts with my particular generation. And it's also something that I see on my channel. So if I read some of the comments that I get on this channel, again, the reason I'm doing this video is because there's one thing that I really, really, really need to set straight here. And I feel it's important because it doesn't just apply to my channel. It applies generally to the world. We're going to scroll over to a video and read some of this stuff. Oh my God, it totally ruins the video when you're just complaining about how you don't want to make the video the entire time you're making the video. And they're referring to one video where, um, where the microscope camera is not working. So I'm trying to, I, I had planned to do a video on this particular board. My microscope camera doesn't, and uh, the lens setup for it is not working. So I have, I have uh, two choices. I cannot do the video 
and use my eyepieces and get the repair done in five or ten minutes. Or I can try to teach you something where I'm using the camera because I can only use the camera. I can look at the camera on the screen and I can solder screaming and cursing as anybody who's tried to use a television instead of looking at what they're doing is going to do. But I decide because I want to help, I want to teach, I want you to learn something that I'm just going to deal with it and I'm going to bitch it as I do it. Because this is, again, if you try to, you sit here trying to solder using a TV with one and a half seconds of input lag and You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. But I digress. And my reply is, of, as usual, eh, X button is always in the upper right-hand corner. Again, you don't like the video? That's fine. You didn't pay for it. I didn't charge you for it. Hit X. Again, like the, the, I, I, there's a lot of content on YouTube that I don't like. There are, a lot of, there are a lot of content creators on YouTube that have 30 million subscribers, and they have 30 million subscribers off of content that I don't even like. And when I see that content and when I think it's ridiculous and asinine and bullshit, honestly, I, just, I, I, like, I don't type, oh my God, this is the worst, blah, 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 blah. Most 99% of the time, I just hit X. Really. Change the channel. Hit X. Instead of... And, there's a reply to this, holy shit, you are a douchebag. You don't seem to appreciate any of your customers, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I found the exit and dislike button. Thanks for showing people how to turn your stuff off. And this is where the entitlement thing kind of starts to come in. You don't seem to appreciate your customers. How much did you pay for that video? How much? Show me. Like, show me the voided, sh sh show me the copy of your check from your checkbook. Show me the charge on your credit card. Show me the thing in your PayPal. You didn't. You paid nothing. So therefore, you are entitled to nothing. Just, look, just, so, just so we got that straight. And then this comes down to the last point, which is some people don't mind, but if you care about viewership, you would stop blaming viewers or pointing out that we don't like this. And, that, and that's the thing. Because the, the, this has been a comment that's been coming up, I would say, a couple of times a week. Um, let me talk about the viewership. And let me talk about my, my priorities for viewership. So this channel was made for the me of seven years ago, for the me of 17 years ago. The whole point of this channel, my ideal viewer, my target demographic is me when I did not have knowledge. The whole point here is I would like to be able to sit down nine-year-old Lewis in front of this YouTube channel and within a few days have him be pretty much 27-year-old Lewis as a tech. That's what I'm looking for with this channel. I want you to be able to skip ahead of all the misery. I want you to skip ahead of all the bad explanations on the internet. Skip ahead of all the bad advice. Skip ahead of all the bad tools. Skip ahead of all the mistakes that you're going to make just by watching this. I'm looking for those people who are willing to put the time and effort in to simply sit and appreciate a free resource that is giving them a guide, a step-by-step -step answer key on how to make hundreds of thousands of dollars doing something that very few people know how to do. That's what I'm looking to do. And if that works for you, Great. If you are inclined to take this answer key, this, this guide, these hundreds of hours of content that is here to show you how to do this for free, then I'm all for you. But if you're here to complain and to bitch about the manner in which the answer key is being provided, if you're complaining that while I'm cheating and I'm showing you my citywide test while you're sitting next to me, which is something I can get expelled for, if you're complaining that I'm not filling in the little answer thing enough, if you're complaining that I'm not filling the Scantron thing in enough so that you can see it perfectly then you can suck it. Then you can take the test yourself and good luck passing it. Again, I am taking time out of my day to do this. And that's one of the things you have to understand is that in terms of viewership and caring about increased viewership, what is my goal? Because a lot of people, when they are giving you advice on what to do and telling you what you should and should not do, they're assuming that you have a goal that you may not have. I make money when I go to a, when I make money when a medical office calls me and they want to up and they want to migrate from Windows Server 2003 to 2012. I make money when a condo complex says, "Hey, our con our cameras suck. Can you install better ones?" And they have 100 units. I make money when somebody brings in a dead board and wants to pay me $300 or whatever to refurbish their machine. That is where I make money. That is where I care. That is where I'm actually putting effort into things like, 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 like caring what you think. When it comes to an online video series that is free, that, that, that I, 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 don't, I really, I don't care. View it if you want to view it or hit X. Because that's the thing you need to realize. This content is here for you. This content is not here for me. I don't learn anything by uploading me repairing boards to YouTube. You learn something by me uploading board repairs to YouTube. I don't, like, I, I'm not going to learn. I'm not going to become any better at my craft as a result of uploading this. This content is here for you. If you don't like it, I'm not going to be offended by the fact that you don't like it. I'm not going to be pissed off that you don't like it. 
but by all means, hit X in the browser. I don't care. And the thing is, you don't owe me anything for this content. Again, for you don't owe me a damn thing for what I do. Again, for people like Chris Long, for people who ask good questions, for people who actually go through the effort to look through the content I've created to see if I've answered their question already, and then if there's one little aspect that's unclear, I will always answer those questions with a one or a two-page response at three in the morning. I will always be here for those hardcore users who are actually looking to learn something, who started from a, a humble place and want to better themselves. I'll, 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 that, you're why I'm editing videos at three in the morning. When I'm, when I'm yawning and falling asleep. You're why I'm recording videos at four in the morning when I know that that border pair would take two minutes instead of 30 if I wasn't recording it. That's my audience. That's my demographic. That's who I'm doing these videos for. Again, with Jessa and I, if you come humble and willing to learn and look like you've put some effort into trying, but there's one little thing you didn't get, we're probably going to be helping people like you to the detriment of our businesses, our families, and our lives until the end of time. It doesn't matter what's in our queue. We will sit and help you but if, if you come with that attitude. But when you come with that kind of attitude like, hey, I demand for free that you stop doing this. Hey, I demand for free that you tell me this. You can suck a dick. That, let's just get it clear. Uh, you don't owe me anything for what I've created. I've put that out here for free. You don't owe me a thing. But let's get another thing clear. I don't owe you a thing. There's nothing. This idea that like, I think we've earned this from you from being your viewer. No, you haven't. You haven't earned. Again, if you haven't paid me, you don't owe you, I don't owe you a damn thing. If I am not, um, if you have not paid me for a service, if you have not paid me for consulting, if you have not paid me for the school, I owe you nothing. But let's just make sure that that is clear before we go forward with any more videos and any more stuff. I owe you nada, nothing. There is no debt to be paid. There is absolutely nothing of that nature here. Free online video series. Take it and learn and make good money doing this stuff or don't take it. Learn on your own and you know, X button in the upper right corner of your browser. I don't care. And what really, really, get, again, what makes this even funnier is uh, Jessa gets her channel trolled even more often than mine. And then there's somebody who asks for help with something. And then this one guy, ch she chimes in and says, contact me from my website for a quote. And then some guy says, I'm not trying to outsource my work. I want to learn something. Is that not an option or is the only way for me to give you my money? Now, here's what I really want to get. Here's what I really want to talk about here. Here's the thing. As I've said, I will be here editing videos for free and I will be replying to humble people like Chris Long on Advanced Reworks uh, as long as I'm, I'm alive, most likely. I will more than happily never charge people like that to give them advice. And again, even to the detriment of my business, to the detriment of me getting everything done, to the detriment of me doing my own work, to the detriment of me working on my own website, I will choose to help people like that instead of do the things that I need to do for myself. And Jess most likely will, again, for the rest of our lives. As long as you come in with that kind of humble attitude and you show that you have learned from what we have put out there. You make it feel like what we did was not a waste of time. When you do that, you'll get help. Because you see, what he's done is a couple of things. First, he's shown that he appreciates the information that I've put out there. That there is that, that he also realizes that there is some responsibility on himself to find that information instead of me scrolling through it and then typing a one or two or a three page letter to each person who emails me. He understands that I probably get those questions all the time and that I don't really want to answer them. So what he's done there is he's already given me some consideration. Then when he frames his question, he's careful to frame his question in terms of what could I do to try to solve this on my own and how could I provide information on what I've already done and show that I've already tried to solve this problem so that he has a better uh, idea of how to answer it. So he's giving me that consideration of trying to make it so I don't have to do as much work while simultaneously showing appreciation for the content I've already put there. So immediately, even if you wanted to pay me, I would tell you, no, here's what you should do and I'm not taking your money because of the attitude that was given. The attitude is, is, is everything. The attitude that you have when you're asking the question is everything. And that's something that I'm very, very careful of when I'm asking people who may know something I don't to help me. I'm very careful with the attitude. I'm very careful to give them an attitude that's going to motivate them to want to teach me, to motivate them to want to give me the answer key. When you post something like that, you're, you're actually asking for the same thing that we're already willing to give away for free. That's the thing. You're actually asking for what it is we're already putting out there for free. But because you asked it like that, you can suck it and you can go fuck yourself. Politely, but that is, that is really the attitude. You come with that attitude, oh, so I have to pay you? You're not going to give it away for free? Now that you come with the expectation of it being free, again, politely, you can go fuck yourself. 
And this is one of the things that is really, really important. So when I got to work at Avatar Studios when I was 17 years old as a teenager, the way I learned a lot of stuff, it was not from just sitting there and asking a bunch of stupid questions. Because I assure you, the last thing these people want to do when they have sessions that are 14 hours early coming in that are paying $3,000 a day with producers that are bitching like they're paying $3,000 a day for the service they're receiving, the last thing they want to do is sit and answer my dumb questions. So I'll sit there and I'll watch what they're doing and, um, and I'll, I'll pay attention to every single little thing they're doing. And I'll try to think about why it is they're troubleshooting the way they're troubleshooting. Why it is they're taking out the things that they're taking out. Why it is they're replacing the things they're replacing. And I'll Google a little bit and I'll think. And then when the time comes, I'll try to help them with it. And then once I'm halfway through helping them, I'll ask one question. I'll say, okay, I see what you did here and I see what you did over there and I know why you did this. But with this one little piece, why should I put the wire here or should I put it there? And they'll answer me. Because what I've done is I've shown that I'm paying attention to what it is they've done. I have shown that I have the ability to learn. And I'm also showing that I'm willing to help. So I'm not just asking for free advice. I'm actually helping them and then asking them for free advice while I'm helping them. And one of the things you're going to notice is that these people are willing to give away silly, stupid amounts of information during their lunch break. They're willing to give this away when they have deadlines. They're willing to give this information away when they're on their own time doing work for themselves or side jobs that make them money. Instead of working on their stuff, they'll actually work helping you. When you come to them with that attitude, when you come to them with that humble attitude, they will always be willing to help you. But when you come with that attitude of like, I demand this for free, I don't feel like searching or like that, again, that, like that I fix it post from that no backlight uh, teacher leave that PCH alone video where it's like, I do my repair the way I want. I want to know where the pieces are. You tell me. You, again, you can suck a dick. Really, politely, you can suck a dick. I'm, you know, nobody's ever going to help you that knows anything, and you're, you're never going to fix that machine. That machine will have no backlight until the end of time because, again, it's the attitude. The attitude is wrong. You will never learn. You will never learn. You will never get anywhere with that attitude. That, that, that is what it is in the tech profession. Whether it, you're an IT consultant, whether you're a component level board repair, or whether you're working on 60-year-old recording consoles and equipment, you're just never going to get anywhere with that attitude. And this continues and just gets funnier and funnier and funnier because it's like, oh my God, this is a funny thread. It's like, you know, believe me, I'm as good as you and I work with this stuff too. And, but, oh, but do you provide remote training if I can't travel all the way to you? And like, I, and this is where like the right thing to do, the right thing to do is to just shut the fuck up and laugh at this because that, that's what we usually do. We just, we laugh. I will not answer your questions anymore. We get a good kick out of it, but I decided to say something that I feel is appropriate. I've never requested remote training from people I was just as good as. And then we get to the title of the video. You guys aren't really dicks in real life, right? I mean, blah, blah, blah. And then it's, hey, I can do the same shit with you guys doing this. What? Is this, oh, look at me. I'm the only guy on the planet who can do this. Learn to appreciate people and don't brush, brush them off, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and this, is, this is the title of the video. Again, this comes into play with the whole millennial generation and the uh, expectations and the entitlement and the culture of entitlement. That really, again, what is a dick? And that's the, th- that's the thing. I define a dick as somebody who is, for absolutely no reason, being excruciatingly mean to me for the sake of being mean to me. And I feel that the millennials, that generation, people who are my age, they define dick as somebody who does not give them what they want immediately. Who somebody who does not take the pacifier and put it in their mouth immediately. Somebody who does not say, hey, you know what? You don't have to take finals this week. Who gives a fuck? You all passed just because something happened halfway across the country that has nothing to do with you. Uh, that is the millennial generation. And here, it's, oh, we just don't feel like answering a bunch of questions for free on our free time. So we're dicks. And, 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 and again, no, motherfucker. No, 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 no. See, a dick to you, a, if you define somebody telling you what you don't want to hear as being a dick, we're all dicks. That professor's a dick. I'm a dick. Jess is a dick. But by the traditional definition of a dick, when you really look closely at it, that ain't what it is. And one of the things that Jess is doing that I actually disagree with that I'm not doing, so I believe information is free. I, I believe all the information that I have in my brain should be out there and available for free. I'm not going to spoon feed it to you. I'm not going to answer a bunch of silly questions on my work time, but all that information is up here for free. Jessa is going to have videos of paid content that you cannot watch without paying her. And there's also content that she's simply never going to upload as a video that's only going to be there if you take her course. My content, everything that I'm teaching, everything I'm showing you is actually stuff that I've made available for free. We differ there. But 
One of the things that we both agree on, one of the things we both agree on very much is, is on this entitlement thing. Uh, again, I get maybe 600 or 700 phone calls a day according to my PBX system. And recently, a good like 10 or 20 of those a day is what temperature do you use in your soldering iron? Where do you get your LCD connectors from? Where do you get your LCD connectors from? What temperature do you use in your soldering iron? What microscope do you use? What temperature do you use in your soldering iron? What microscope do you use? What V workstation do you use? What ultrasonic do you use? What ultrasonic do you use? What fluid do you use in your ultrasonic? What ultrasonic do you use? What fluid do you use in your ultrasonic? What fluid do you use in your ultrasonic? What ultrasonic do you use? What fluid do you use in your ultrasonic? What ultrasonic do you use? What fluid do you use in your ultrasonic? What ultrasonic do you use? What fluid do you use in your ultrasonic? What ultrasonic do you use? What temperature do you use in your soldering iron? What temperature do you use in your soldering iron? What type of BGA rework station do you use? What type of BGA rework station do you use? What type of BGA rework station do you use? What type of BGA rework station do you use? What type of temperature do you use in your soldering iron? What type of tips do you use in your soldering iron? What type of tips do you use? Shut the f it really if you think that's annoying, keep in mind that I've done that maybe twenty or thirty times. Whereas getting a phone call in my business where I actually expected a paying client or a potentially paying client or hell, even somebody who may just walk in the store and not spend money but somewhere down the line spend money is calling me, I get calls like that 10 to 20 times a day. Can you imagine how annoying that is? Particularly when all of that information is already out there for free. So not only have you shown me that you lack the time or the inclination to go through the free guides that I've given you on all this information, you've also shown me that you have an entitlement to call and bother my staff during business hours to ask all these questions. You don't care that me may be working on five things at a time. You don't care that me may have 600 calls a day. You don't care that there's a staff of three people handling 50 or 40 tickets a day. No, but you care about us. You care about you. You care about getting information for free without even waiting. You just think, okay, I'm just going to call these people. I'm going to interrupt their day, and I'm going to ask a question. But not only ask a question, I'm going to ask a follow-up question, and a follow-up question, and a follow-up question, and a follow-up question. And when these people finally decide, you know what, let me link you to a YouTube video that has that information already because I have work to do, that I'm a dick, that I'm an asshole, that I'm just this big, incredible douchebag. You know why? It's not because I'm being mean. It's not because I'm going out of my way to say, fuck you, you prick. It's because I haven't given you what you want. I haven't given the baby the pacifier. I haven't given the students the, 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 you know, like the ability to take the exam whenever they want. And for that, really, no. That is not the definition of a dick. That is the definition of a totally reasonable person who is sick and fucking tired of being bothered by people who feel entitled to do so. So what is a dick? I hope I've answered that question with this video. A dick is somebody who is incredibly mean to you without reason. A dick is not somebody who is simply denying you the, in, the, the resources, the time, and, the, and the, the answers that you're not entitled to, that you never paid for, that you never contributed anything uh, to that person for to make them want to do that for you. And, you know, yeah, ultimately, do, I owe, do you owe me anything? No. Do I owe you anything? Fuck no. So get that out of your head and get the hell out of here with any of that shit. If there's anything that you don't like about these videos, I, I, fully, again, I fully encourage you to hit X in your web browser and learn on your own. The same way that all of us, again, all the people who do this for a living, you know, one of the things you got to realize, which is kind of funny, so now you got like the people who are learning who hate me. You also got the people who know how to do this who hate me because there's a lot of people who took six, seven, eight, nine, ten years out of their life to learn how to do all this stuff at the point where they're really good at it to the point where they can tell you across the internet, hey, I haven't measured anything on your board, but from what you're describing, you need to replace X, Y, and Z and run a wire here. To get to that point, it took them years and years of time, years of banging their head against the wall, years of driving themselves nuts and sitting in a little room until four or five in the morning, almost at the point of tears because this thing is supposed to make sense and it's just not making sense until the next day they come back and the next day they come back and then a week later, it finally becomes apparent after their customers screamed at them, after they've destroyed something, after they've bought a bunch of tools and parts that they didn't really need to fix that problem in pursuit of the right one. You have to realize that there is a, um, a disdain for what I've done in this small community because what I've done is I have given, uh, I've given other people a means to avoid that. So that's kind of seen as a rite of passage. Figuring out all this shit on your own is kind of seen as a rite of passage for people who had to figure that out. And what I'm doing is I'm taking that away by giving you the ability to figure all this stuff out very, very easily by putting it into such plain terms and by putting this out on the internet for free in such an easily digestible fashion, you have a lot of people who don't like me, who have an attitude um, for, for no reason, 
just because of, of what I've done. And I know because I have the emails in my inbox. I have the private messages from forums in my inbox. I know what, that com- I know what a lot of people in that community think. So now I got to deal with that. But I, but I, and I get dealing with that. But I sure as shit am not going to listen to that stuff from you. And I am, there is no way in hell that anything is going to be changing for a user base or a viewership of people who are getting content for free. My goal, again, it's not viewership. I don't care about views. I don't care about maximum views. What I care about is that the content gets to the people who need it and that it helps the people who need it, who deserve it, who are my primary demographic, who are my target demographic. And if you're somebody who's complaining and bitching over this kind of minutia, then you're not it. And I don't care if you learn. And and again, one of, one, of the things to, and one of the things that really helps me realize this, one of the things that really puts it in perspective when those times when like, I think you know, there's a 1% chance that they may be right, you know, what helps put it into, you know what helps me put it into perspective? It's when I have a problem. It's when I have a question. It's when I'm dealing with something and I say, okay, so what is pulling this down if there is no resistance to ground over here and this signal is actually being created? What pulls it down at this point in the boot-up cycle and how does that cause the SPI ROM to not work? Like, whatever. I I come up with some strange question for some strange situation I have. Do you know who answers me? Nobody. Do you know who helps me? Nobody. When I have any type of problem, do I get to ask you? No. 90% 90% of the people that I will ask will simply be surprised that I'm even bothering. Like, what are you coming to me with problems for? I have my own problems to solve. I don't want to deal with your ship, which they're totally okay to do. All those people who know how to answer my questions, they're not interested. And the people who are interested in answering my questions, they don't have an answer for me. It's only when I finally have a question, when I don't know how to solve something and I'm genuinely stumped and I actually want to figure it out, that I realize uh, just how much entitlement my own video series has created. Because before the series was created, me having the most basic questions with the good attitude is considered bullshit to most people that I'm asking them to. It really is. It's like, what are you, what do you, what do you think you are even asking us this? Who do you think you are contacting us and wasting our time with this? Who do you think you are even when you're offering us $100 to help you answer your question, asking us this? You know, that's the attitude that I get. And so when I see these, these kinds of comments, it really just does bring everything in a full circle. It really does bring everything into context. And 